Well, good morning and welcome to our session um, in the Learning Planet Festival. We're going to explore um, how we can enterprise in education for fit for future results. Um, in this recorded plenary session, I have um, two guests, two speakers um, in order of appearance. Um, we will have um, Ferla van den Vert and uh, Georgios Kostakos um, from the COVID era initiative. Um, and I'm going to share screen. We're going to share some slides with you and have relatively brief um, description of what um, we are doing and suggesting. Um, it will be followed by a live discussion here in Amsterdam, um, but we also hope that it will spark some discussions um, on your side and you will be able to um, benefit from what we are presenting here. Um, we are going to build our presentation on two projects or initiative. Um, one is COVIDEA and the other one is the Parent Entrepreneurs Project. Uh, but all in all, what we would like to do is that we would like to put these two flowers together. Um, you can either see them as flowers or cogwheels, but both of them um, are very colorful. Uh, they have a lot of elements and they can also um, work together very well. On the left-hand side, um, you can see the cogwheel or flower of the sustainable development goals. And um, one of the reasons why we are um, holding this event is that um, in Berlin, UNESCO has adopted the Berlin Declaration on Education for Sustainable Development, um, which is much, much more than environment protection. Um, it is um, a really 21st century education approach where we are trying to educate people who are responsible and critical enough um, to live a life that will <clears throat> make it possible for the next generations to also uh, live their lives on the same planet as we are now. And uh, the other uh, flower or cogwheel, whichever uh, your um, visualization of it is, um, is the Entracomp um, flower, um, which highlights the entrepreneurial skills um, that are so necessary uh, for renewing education all over the world. I just want to have a footnote saying that we are not going to discuss um, the, the business model for education and also not about the privatization of education, but we are going to talk about entrepreneurship in its broad sense, um, collecting ideas, spotting opportunities, um, identifying resources and implementing action that is suitable for the left-hand side flower, education for sustainable development. Uh, with this very short introduction, I'm going to hand over to Verla, who is going to talk about the COVID, COVID Education Alliance. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Esther, and um, thank you for all those who are listening uh, for being with us this morning. Uh, and good morning to all of you. Um, thanks for this opportunity to briefly introduce the COVID Education Alliance, or better said, to introduce what the COVID Education Alliance stands for, namely um, the conviction that we need to change what we teach and how we teach it. Indeed, our current education system was developed more than 150 years ago. Um, and at that time, life and the world was very different from where we are now. Next slide, please. Indeed, the, the system was made for bringing students into a market economy where they would practice in a, a profession that they would keep for the rest of their life, being a lawyer, being um, a doctor, whatever it might be. And it was based mainly on acquiring the necessary knowledge to be able to practice uh, this profession. But uh, the, the world has changed since then quite a bit. At this moment in time, I think we all agree that we are living in a very quickly changing world, increasingly becoming a digital world, that the professions we have today are not the professions we will practice tomorrow. I for myself already during my life changed my profession three times, 
and I'm pretty sure that most of you, by the time you are at my age, you will have exercised quite a bit of different uh, jobs. So we need to make lifelong learning one of these crucial elements on how we look at learning and how we look at our teaching. Next slide, please. So in COVID idea, we focus on this need to change how and what we learn. And we mainly do this one from a digital perspective because we firmly believe that there are the digital tools available to help us make this switch, this necessary switch to be able to be ready for the future that these tools do exist. I don't want to uh, zoom in on this slide in too great details because the next slides are doing it, but I just want to draw your attention to pre two pre prerequisites if we want to talk about you know, digital education. And the first one is of course, you know, in the blue triangle at the bottom that we need to have internet access. And then luckily this is not yet the case everywhere on, or in the world. And secondly, of course, that we have a safe environment. Again, this is certainly not the case as is increasingly not becoming the case, but these are two prerequisites. Um, COVID idea is not taking into, into its work program, but it is important that we are aware that they need to be available. Next slide, please. So in, in the first place, COVID idea focus on changing what we are learning. Um, changing what we are learning which was built mainly on knowledge acquirement, learning by heart, then sitting exams and reproducing what you knew by heart. But nowadays we also need to build character. We need to build judgment. We need to be able to differentiate false from uh, not false news. We need to be resilient like the COVID pandemic has shown us, social awareness and build responsible citizenship. In short, we need in fact to learn also the social and emotional intelligence component of our daily living. And of course, understand very well also compute, computational science besides being able to read and do the general maths. So this is quite an overhaul of what we know at this moment in time or that what we do traditionally at this moment in time. And I'm very happy to learn that in the, in the festival, so many of the site events go about you know, this new approach to teaching or the new tools to give teaching in a different way. I was listening to one about gaming, you know, which really shows that you can use game in order to build character, in order to build judgments and things like, uh, like this. The next slide shows that indeed um, the digital tools are available to help us in this transition. Of course, the transition has to focus on the teachers and the parents who have to be aware and have to have the skills to help to, to help this make this transition come true, but at least the tools are available. There is a lot of digital knowledge and content available. Uh, I was quite amazed when one of our members of COVID idea was doing a report on digital tools for citizenship. And it was quite impressive how in fact already a lot of knowledge is available and being compiled. Then there are quite a number of new delivering tools from augmented reality to gaming. Like I was mentioning, gaming could be a very good tool to, to learn. And increasingly, there is a lot of use of digital learning support where we use artificial intelligence to really gear the teaching towards the individual capacities and needs of the individual students. So that in fact, you don't have a teacher giving a class to 30 students, but every single learning package is adapted to the needs and the skills of the individual learner. Also in the field of assessment and verification, there is a lot of new tools available. Particularly, I want to draw your attention on microcredits. So where indeed you could learn the skills you need and the knowledge you need for the particular job or the particular company you are going to join. And even in the field of education, management for the registration, for the management of the class uh, online or offline, as nowadays is the case, uh, there are a lot of tools available. So all these tools are available. And what uh, um, the Covidia are trying to do is to make curated content so that you don't really have to go, go and search the web. And currently there is 
a tremendous amount of digital information available, but a COVID idea will help you find your way in this available information and give you guidance on how to use this information for supporting the SDGs. Because everything is in function of particularly SDG4, giving education, sound education to all, digital learning and lifelong learning. The next slide. So all these, um, the, 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 this, these principles of um, COVID idea are explained in our primer and we invite you to read our primer and better to use the primer. Gerios will later explain what we're trying to do with the digital education Agora as a one-stop shop, you know, to get all this curated information at your fingertips. And we have two other components by which we try to operationalize uh, COVID idea or the primer. The first one is working with the private sector, because I think we all know that nowadays many of our learning content, many of the educational content is not anymore developed by the public sector and by the, by the academy, but this also a lot is developed by the private sector. And then the question is, how are we sure that this content, these platforms, the services developed by the private sector is also in function of implementing SDGs and then in particular SDG4. And therefore the organization that gathers all the digital companies together in a sustainability NGO, uh, GESI, has started the program which they call Digital with a Purpose. Digital with a Purpose is in fact to set new standards for the ICT sector in order to help them to comply with the SDGs and to contribute to the implementation of the SDGs. You could really say it's a uh, race to the top. It's trying to develop new metrics by which then the SD, uh, ICT sector can really contribute to the further development in a positive way. And GESI is helping them by developing uh, together with COVID idea, these, this matrix, this standard for the uh, educational sector. So this is one important component of how we try to operationalize our COVID idea primer. The second component, next slide please, is then working with national governments within the framework of the Interregion T Task Force on Technology Transfer. This is a task force of the United Nations uh, organizations that are set together in support of Agenda 2030 and the implementation of the SDGs. And this task force is helping countries to develop roadmaps, realistic doable roadmaps on how to um, achieve the SDGs. And again, their COVID idea is working with these 42 UN organizations in order to help them, helping countries developing digital education roadmaps. Because many countries, of course, have traditional roadmaps, plans on how to develop the education sector. Very often, the digital tools along the lines we explained before um, are not yet considered in, in a sufficient amount. And so we are helping countries to introduce digital education tools into their road mapping and indeed not only focus on acquiring knowledge, but also focusing on acquiring, uh, on building character, building resilience, building uh, responsible citizenship. So these are the, sec the two components, and I leave it then to um, Georgios to introduce the third component, but I do invite you all to read our primer and indeed to put our primer into practice so that we can join the other uh, people in uh, this, um, this um, festival to move to an educational system that is useful and that is preparing our students for a fulfilling life in the future. Thank you very much, Esther, for this opportunity. And I'm muted. Thank you very much, Verla. I'm going to hand over directly to Georgios. Hello, good morning from me too. And uh, happy International Day of Education, like two days later. Uh, it's good to be with you. Thanks, Esther, for the invitation. And uh, with uh, Verla and the team of Covidia, we've tried to really go beyond the boundaries of what we consider now to be standard education and to really rethink it. 
and we think it's important to do it for the sake of the students and to, of lifelong learners and for the sake of our societies in the future. So one futuristic element of Covidia is this digital education agora, um, how to learn and network in cyberspace. So I'll present it to you a bit in more detail, starting from the name. What's in the name itself? Next slide, please. Um, the Agora, uh, coming from Greece myself, uh, of course, uh, I, I always uh, relate the Agora to the center of the ancient Greek cities, uh, the forum where all social, artistic, spiritual, and political life took place. And that was the place to assemble, to discuss, right, to learn, to be civically engaged and active, to agree and disagree, but overall to learn how to be a person, a citizen, um, and um, to, to, to participate and shape uh, the common life of the city. So this Covidia project um, harnesses the Agora concept of the past um, as the centerpiece of a new approach to education in the digital era. So we take the Agora from the columns that you have seen of uh, ancient ruins in Greece and in Rome and, and other um, ancient empires to the modern cyberspace, uh, cyber world we live in. Next slide, please. So what is the concept really about? It has some key elements. It tries to bring together uh, the elements of modern education. So it is a virtual platform um, with innovative tools, uh, innovative content and methods to pedagogical methods, how to conduct education in the modern era. Um, to respond to the learning requirements of today, right? In a rapidly evolving world, which is digital, which faces a lot of crisis, multidimensional crisis, like we have now with the pandemic, the climate crisis, and interconnected crisis. We saw how we got an economic crisis out of a pandemic, and uh, also climate crisis has a lot of dimensions. So we try to bring on this Agora together those tools, um, and uh, technical and pedagogical and methodologies. We also try to bring together uh, to all relevant stakeholders, because it's not only about uh, students and teachers, which are the very core of education, but it is also about uh, parents and of course about ministries of education. And it is about companies that produce the tools and uh, the broader, uh, let's say universe of actors that are engaged in education, strictly speaking and broadly speaking. So we try to have this Agora as the place where all these actors come together. And we want it to be a place to, to learn, to learn uh, knowledge, but also values, understand more than just uh, the importance of accumulating knowledge, but also to, uh, the importance of shaping a citizenship consciousness. Um, and uh, because this is the basis of, of our values and of our uh, systems of societies. When we forget that, we just make people perhaps knowledgeable in quantity, but we miss the quality of uh, engaged citizens that we want to, to have and to nurture. So, um, and that is from the local community to the global level, this is really important, the sense of um, identification with the community and citizenship, and then we want also to use the Agora to showcase good practices and the latest technologies, often also in a, in a light-hearted, uh, pleasant way through game and et cetera, as we will see later. Next slide, please. So what is it in practice or what will it be in practice? Because it is uh, something we're developing. Um, we, uh, I'll tell you more about this uh, afterwards, but we want it to be something like uh, the, the International Space Station. For those who are familiar with it and who like science fiction like me, perhaps in science practice, you can see that it is a modular approach. You can bring elements from various countries, et cetera, put them together, create an International Space Station that has a lot of functions and each of its elements play a different function, but also it works as a whole. Uh, and this is a modular approach in this case, we have um, the following elements for seen for the Agora, uh, a cafe, a library, vegetarium, but let's visit the Agora itself and see them there. The next slide, please. 
here's the agora. Okay, I don't know uh, if it gives you the sense of a space uh, of a place or a seat in cyberspace, but uh, as we said, when it's developed, it will be like that. So you enter from the gateway on the left and you choose, you assume uh, a role because I mean, you go there as a student, as a teacher, right? As a parent, as an international organization like UNESCO, as a company, like I don't know, whoever makes uh, various tools um, or a lifelong le learner, any citizen can, who continues to learn. And you can go to the cafe where you find your peers, people of the same group, uh, but you can also find others, also connect with others, ask questions and exchange good practices about things. How do I learn this in the best possible way? Or how do I teach this in the best possible way? And things like that. Uh, if you have questions, you or the others who want to help you, you go to the library next door where there is curated material, how to build what Verle said before about the goals of, of COVID, to build character, to build resilience, to build citizenship. You can find ready material for each one of those with good practices, or you can do an artificial intelligence research uh, to, to see whatever uh, else is available uh, around cyberspace. So if you can also go to the digitarium, to, which is like a planetarium, where videos show you what is the latest technologies and how they can be used to support education and learning in general. So you can see, for example, there uh, that uh, through augmented reality, you can live history and you can really absorb it much better than just reading a book of, uh, about a historical period. So these things have been worked on by um, our colleague um, on the Covidia team, uh, Risto Linturi from Finland. The whole concept of um, the Agora and its realization uh, digitally is uh, been worked on by Antonio Camara, the professor, uh, in Portugal and his team and, and many other colleagues are contributing to this, um, to, to this effort. You can also uh, have their go and play a game in the gaming alley and learn indirectly through the gaming uh, process and uh, join also other uh, partners. Uh, go to the company showrooms, see what's the latest in terms of technology that's available or go to the offices of the stakeholders if you belong to the Parents International I suppose there should be an office there and we'll gladly host you, uh, Esther, anyway, you're part of this effort. Um, and, and others, UNESCO and others should be there. So that's that's about it, the, the concept and uh, how we want to realize it. We'll go to the next slide very quickly. Um, so yeah, you, the technical considerations are many. How do you enter the Agora? how do you access these meeting rooms whether you go with an avatar you know you can have yourself moving around we're trying to uh, when we have it ready it should be a 3d environment um, and all these searches integrated in a way that you feel that you live in that space and you can interact uh, naturally with uh, the others uh, there is a lot of potential and we hope that we have a possibility to uh, fully realize it and to open it to, to those who are interested in the broader public. Thank you. Next slide. Thank you very much, George. Um, when you are watching or uh, rewriting the um, uh, recording, you will see uh, the contact details for all of us. So if anybody is interested, um, you can always reach out to um, any of the speakers of today. Um, to, to finish um, the, the presentations and also to spark discussions, um, I'm going to talk about um, the parents' initiatives um, that are um, around enterprising in education. And um, I think that it is a very important approach uh, because um, at the moment, parents are much better suited than professional educators to realize all those learning goals that have been listed in the COVID initiative. Some of them are actually part and parcel of any entrepreneurial framework like building resilience or critical thinking. Um, so in a way we are providing a framework and also some reasoning behind why this should be the approach to education. And also this is how uh, the educators, parents being um, the most important of them, of course, for us, but definitely the first ones uh, should approach 
um, the renewal of education. Um, for this, um, in the Parent Entrepreneurs Consortium, we translated the Entrecomp flower or Entrecomp uh, cogwheel into a parent entrepreneurial educational framework. Um, there is uh, another work being done by Bantani Education on explicit entrepreneurial um, competencies and skills for teachers, which are very, very important. Um, recent research that I was part of shows that the teaching professions are well behind um, in entrepreneurial um, approaches, but also in more or less all digital skills as compared to the general uh, population. For example, um, Verla and George just were mentioning critical thinking, um, the ability to differentiate between fact and opinion is much lower among teachers than among the general population. Um, having said that, um, also the general population is parents and many of them are actually um, very high on these skills. Of course, um, you will not rely on those who have uh, a lot of need for competence development, but you're going to rely on those parents who are um, high ranking officers in digital companies, um, who are critical thinkers themselves, who are entrepreneurs. Um, it's also important because we have also found in our research that um, those people who decide to go for um, professional education as their path are generally must, much less entrepreneurial and very risk averse as compared to general public or in that sense parents. So it is just a very well suited collaboration and what we have um, suggested is that in education, um, when you are looking at the spotting opportunities and ideas phase of um, the entrepreneurial uh, competence framework, um, you have to focus and develop uh, competences in spotting opportunities, um, creative approaches, valuing ideas, especially ones that are not totally your own and having ethical and sustainable thinking around it. Um, also, we all know that um, resources, both phys physical and virtual and human resources are very, very important um, to realize the necessary change in education. So um, what we are focusing on is self-awareness and self-efficacy. Resilience is very much part of this um, element of resources, uh, motivation and perseverance. Um, and working with and mobilizing others. Um, we have found that in the school closure periods um, and all the really devastating measures um, as pandemic response have actually sparked parental activism. Uh, what we want to see is that this parental activism is also utilized in maintaining schools because there is a very frightening development that parents don't believe in uh, states providing education anymore, and they're rather setting up their own systems, which is just the wrong approach. Um, and once we have the ideas and all the resources, um, then we have to jump into action, but jumping into action means that you have to have very thorough planning. You have to be able to analyze and cope with risk. And we have seen in the last two years that you also have to um, really cope with ambiguity and uncertainties. And this is a learning journey. So this is part of lifelong learning. You are also learning from uh, your experiences and you are um, uh, looping it back to uh, previous phases so that you can find new opportunities and also uh, dig up some new resources. So this is the framework that we are providing for enterprising in education. Um, and the question uh, that I want to focus on a little bit is what we mean by fit for future results. Um, this um, has been a parent's initiative. So I wanted to clarify what kind of rules, roles parents can have in education. And um, parents are the primary educators of their children, which means two things. They are the first educators 
but also we clearly see from research that they have the biggest impact on learning success, not the actual academic outcomes, but uh, children's approach to learning. Uh, they have the primary role up to about age 11, 12. Then it's taken over by the peer group, but parents are still the second, and it's never the teachers um, as compared to common belief. Um, also, parents are scaffolders um, of education, so they are providing the frameworks um, which uh, will make it possible for the child to develop and for also the professional educators to do their jobs. And parents can also be gatekeepers, uh, gatekeepers in two different senses. Um, on the left hand side, you see this um, quote from um, the Game of Thrones, you shall not pass. So they can just keep the gate closed when it comes to anything to renew education. But also what you can see on the right hand side, they can be the gatekeepers who are keeping, keeping the gates open. And of course, this is what we are pursuing because parents are the ones who have a lot of experience in um, using new technologies. They also need know what um, they as employers need or don't need from what the education system is providing for. So we are working towards um, the left-hand side meaning of gatekeeper. Um, for this, there is, a reason, there is a very, very big need for uh, having a parental engagement approach in schools. And for this, I just brought you um, a short quote um, that very much summarizes what we mean by parental engagement because very often parental involvement and parental engagement are used as synonyms why they aren't. Um, the big difference is that when you speak about involvement, um, then you are inviting the parents to take part into, in something that already exists. And parental engagement means that um, you as professionals in the school reflect on parental needs and also fears, but also you engage the parents from the first moment um, in uh, figuring out what to do differently. And we believe that this is the approach, uh, a partnership approach that we badly need for the necessary changes. Um, whatever has been outlined as uh, the technical uh, approach to uh, reimagining re education also needs a reimagining of the soft part. And uh, this is where we can um, enterprise in education and also feed into what uh, the COVID uh, uh, initiative has started to demand for. Um, we also know that there is a huge um, wish on the side of parents uh, to be heard of and to be heard and to be part of the renewal. There has been two really large scale researches um, published recently that very, very, very clearly see that parents have a different um, view on education. Uh, they value social emotional learning and um, active citizenship learning much more than academic learning. Uh, probably it was a change during the school closures, but definitely it was a change that was triggered by parents experiencing much more that academic content in curricula is becoming more and more obsolete and that other types of learning are much more important. Um, Parents International uh, started um, research-based global action call uh, back in May 2020, which uh, probably seems very, very early in the uh, pandemic restriction period but not much has changed since. So the two large scale research just uh, that were conducted in 2021 basically reinforced our messages. Um, and this slide very, very briefly uh, summarizes um, what parents have been asking for. Um, the first and also already mentioned element that school is a place for social learning much less academic learning. It can be acquired at home on your own, um, reading, um, looking into resources, but we do need the physical meeting place. Um, 
Uh, of course, the digital agora is a nice extension, but we need children to meet in person and to be together. Um, we also have to have a clear division. We have to have a clear understanding what is the role of school in the educational continuum of the child. Um, just yesterday, I was a speaker at um, a webinar uh, with the European School Net, where we had a very imp interesting discussion on basic skills. Um, because everybody says that, yeah, it's very, very important to have all this, but first children have to acquire basic skills. But what we have found is that there is no agreement on what we mean by basic. Um, and Parents International have a separate initiative on trying to define uh, basic skills in various um, fields together with um, economic actors, researchers, um, and also some policymakers. Um, what has also become very apparent is that it's very nice that we've been focusing a lot on um, academic knowledge and especially STEM education, but well-being is um, probably much more important because if you have a high level of well-being, then your academic learning is also much better. With low levels of well-being, academic learning will actually not happen. So there is a need to focus on arts, sports, and child-centered, child-friendly methodologies. Um, an interesting side effect is that we have found that um, it actually works to start later, that more or less all researchers are begging for to not start school before nine o'clock. And also to try to have a little bit longer school holidays, um, not just rushing through the holidays in the winter, um, so probably school schedules with regards to calendar and also the, the organization of the day will probably change. Um, one other outcome was that um, some of the assessment methodologies that have been cast in stone have been became movable. So it would be the perfect moment to abolish um, standardized tests and to have a much more formative assessment. Um, and of course, um, as a, a penultimate finding is that there is a need to keep using digital tools, especially because digital tools are the best uh, for individual inclusion needs and uh, addressing them. Of course, um, parents want the teachers, want the professionals to understand, acknowledge family circumstances, um, this is very much a, a current school closure issue, uh, but what we have seen that most of the chaos was caused by teachers not understanding that not in every home there are work from home parents who are actually not working from home but doing the work of teachers, and also there is not necessarily a separate device and also enough uh, broadband uh, for everybody to do online learning. So this is um, the basis of our initiative um, and what we want to do is basically eliminate the possibility that parents will be the obstacle to change uh, but we would like to support parents to be more entrepreneurial uh, to also scaffold the learning of teachers to be more enterprising in their approaches to education and parents are there to keep the gate open for any new initiatives for the best interest of our children. I would like to thank you all for your attention. Um, unfortunately, this is a recorded session. So at the moment, there is no possibility for questions and answers. But as I said, all our um, details are in the slides. Um, if you rewind uh, the recording, you can reach out to any of us. And we're always open to uh, organizing in person, and well, I personally not really um, support online meeting uh, possibilities, but let's try to continue this thinking and uh, work and achieve a general, work for and achieve a general change of education. Thank you very much. And I'm just asking Verla and Georges whether you want to say anything as the closing remarks. Just to say, yeah, uh, it's important to be entrepreneurial, as you said, uh, in the broader sense, which is not only about being entrepreneurs to make uh, money, which is also important, but to keep the society moving, uh, exploring, and 
keeping uh, the new uh, the young people interested and as you said making them happy making education part of the life and part of um, exploring the world and uh, being the happiest persons and successful in their careers so i think we are together in these things that. thank you and i want to thank you Esther, for you know being so much at the forefront of this needed change you know um, working with parents and, and changing what people think about parents and the attitude of parents at the same time, I think is extremely needed. And of course, like you rightly say, it was very often in the educational circles, you hear that they say, oh, it's the parents, you know, who don't want change. And they are so much on having good results and everything is focusing on, you know, if the kid comes home with a seven out of 10 or nine out of 10. And what you are indicating and showing is that indeed there is a change happening and that parents, you know, may be at the forefront of asking for change to prepare the children for a quickly changing world. So um, I would like to, to stop by saying thank you and I hope you can continue uh, your good work and reaching out to, to many, many parents. And then this change is going to happen if there is a demand for change. Because my reading is that indeed the demand for change is not so much going to come from the established institution. That takes a long time. But if parents are going to start demanding change and demanding that we equip our kids with computational skills, social and emotional intelligence, we will see quickly a change in the education system and a much happier society in five, 10 years from now. So thanks for your work and good luck with your workshop this afternoon. And indeed, we hope that soon we will be all together for an in-person meeting uh, to bring this uh, quest of ours forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I can also only thank you for your enthusiasm and uh, the investment, especially human resources investment in the COVID um, uh, initiative. And uh, we definitely will continue uh, pursuing the goals together, which are very much in line. So what you would want to achieve is very much in line with what we would like to achieve based on um, especially parents' needs. Thank you very much and um, see you next time. Okay, thanks.